Hello, I'm Anthony Vaughn with the product marketing team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the 12-bit multi-buffered analog to digital converter, or MIB-ADC module, and show you how to configure it using Halcogen, TI's tool for generating initialization and peripheral driver code for Hercules MCUs. Most microcontrollers in the Hercules platform integrate a 12-bit successive approximation analog to digital converter module. On most MCUs, this module is capable of taking a 0 to 3.3 volt or 0 to 5 volt analog signal and converting it to either a 10-bit or 12-bit digital value. This ADC module also supports start of conversion triggering from a software, an external pin, or cross-triggering from other peripheral modules in the microcontroller. The ADC module is comprised of separate components that can be seen on this block diagram. The major components include the input analog multiplexer, the self-test and calibration block, the ADC core, the multi-buffered RAM, the DMA request block, the sequencer and memory interface controller, and the threshold and interrupt generation control logic. Many Hercules microcontrollers implement two 12-bit ADCs configured with shared input channels as shown in this diagram. This is done to create a one out of two safety redundancy configuration. In this configuration, there are a number of dedicated input channels connected to the first ADC and a subset of channels that are shared between the first and the second ADC. Safety critical analog signals can be connected to the channels that are shared between both A to D cores. These signals can be simultaneously converted by both MIB-ADC1 and MIB-ADC2, and then the outputs can be compared via software to ensure that the digital converted results are within an acceptable range from each other. I am now going to show you how to use Halcogen to easily configure the 12-bit ADC module to perform analog to digital conversions. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area on the website ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be installed directly from the software DVD that is included in all Hercules USB stick and Hercules development kits. In this exercise, we are going to use Halcogen to configure the 12-bit ADC module to acquire data from the ambient light sensor that is included on the development board. We are also going to configure the SCI module in UART mode to transmit the converted digital value to the PC for observation in a terminal window. For this exercise, we are going to need a Windows PC, either the TMS 570LS31 or RM48 USB stick, or either of the Hercules development kits. We are also going to need Halcogen and Code Composer Studio. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Windows Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New, Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all generated code to be stored. In Halcogen, the first step is to create a new project. We do this by clicking on File, then selecting New Project. In the New Project window, we select our family and device. For this particular example, we will select the RM4 family and then the TMDX RM48 USB device. Next, we will enter the name of our project in the Name field. We will call this project ADC. We can also choose the directory where Halcogen will store its generated files using the Location field. The Tool Selection menu at the bottom of this window can be used to select the development toolset that will be used for project compilation. The supported toolsets include Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio, the Kyle ARM toolset, and the IAR toolset. We will leave this field set to Texas Instruments tool since we will be using Code Composer Studio. Next, we click the OK button and Halcogen will start the new project configuration for us. In this next view, we will see a block diagram view of the microcontroller. We can navigate through Halcogen by either using the block diagram or using the tabs located near the top of the screen. The next step is to go to the driver enable tab and enable ADC1 and the SCI2 driver. We do this by selecting unmark all drivers, then selecting enable ADC1 and enable SCI2. The next step is to go to the ADC1 tab and in the ADC1 group 1 sub tab make the following configurations. We will change the FIFO size to 1 since we only want to take a single ADC conversion. 
The next step is to enable pin 9, since this is the pin that the ambient light sensor is connected to on the development board. Next, we click on the SCI2 tab, and in the SCI Data Format subtab, we will need to ensure that the module is set up with a 9600 baud rate, 8 data bit length, with 2 stop bits, and no parity. Next, we need to generate code. To do this, we select File, Generate Code. Haukagen now will generate all the startup code and peripheral drivers we need to complete this exercise. The next step is to launch Code Composer Studio. It can be found in the Start menu under All Programs, Texas Instruments, Code Composer Studio. In Code Composer Studio, the first step is to create a new project. To do this, we go to File, New, CCS Project. In the new CCS project window, we need to fill in some parameters to define our project. In the project name field, we need to type the name of our project, which is ADC. This name needs to be the same as the one we defined in Haukagen so that CCS will find the files that we created with Haukagen. The next step is to change the device variant to Cortex-R, and then change the device to RM48L950. Then we need to change the connection to Texas Instruments XDS100 V2 USB emulator. Then click Finish. This will create our project that will be viewable on the left side of the screen in the Project Explorer tab. The next step is to expand the project, delete the main.c file. Code Composer will create a blank main file, but we do not need it since we will be using the main function that we created with Haukagen. To delete this file, all we have to do is right-click on it and choose Delete. The next step is to configure some properties for our project. To do this, we need to right-click on the top level of our project and select Properties. In the Properties window, we need to include all our header files that Haukagen created into our project. To do this, we click on Include Options. Then click on the Add button, then select the Workspace area, and add the Include folder. The next step is to click on Debug. Then select the RM48L950 Flash Options. In the Flash Options, we need to change the Erase Options to Necessary Sectors Only for Program Load. This will make the Flash Memory Erase process much faster for this example. Then we will click on Apply, then OK. The next step is to write some code for our application. We first need to open the sys underscore main.c file in our project by double clicking on it. This is the file that we created with Haukagen that contains our main function. As you look through this file, you will notice comments labeled user code begin and user code end. As long as we type all of our code inside these comments, we will be able to re-import our project back into Haukagen and change the driver settings. Haukagen will not touch any code that we enter between these comments. The first code that we need to enter is in the user code begin zero section. Here we need to include the header files sci.h, adc.h, and standardlib.h. Next we need to create a character variable in the user code begin one section that will be used to store the digital conversion value in that we will send to the PC terminal. The next step is to enter some code into the user code begin three section. We will enter this code inside our main function. We will first create all the pointers and variables that we will need for our application. Then we will initialize our SCI and ADC modules by calling the init functions. The next portion of code that will be included is an endless loop or a while one statement. This code will start an ADC conversion and then send the resulting value to the PC via the SCI channel. The final section of code we must enter is in the user code begin for section. This section of code handles the interrupts. This particular exercise does not use interrupts, so we will not place any code in the notification functions. Now that we have entered all code that we need for this project, the next step is to open our terminal window that will be used for sending and receiving characters on the SCI port. The integrated XDS100 version 2 emulator on the Hercules USB stick and development kit boards contain a second channel that is used as a virtual COM port on the PC. You may use any terminal program for this portion of the exercise, but I will use an Eclipse-based terminal 
that can be integrated into Code Composer Studio. To launch the terminal, go to View, Other, and select Terminal. If you do not have this option, you may need to add the terminal plugin to your installation of Code Composer Studio. For instructions on how to do this, please go to the wiki page shown below. After you have started the terminal plugin, click on the yellow settings box. In the settings window, select the COM port. The correct COM port is usually the highest number listed. Then check to make sure that the baud rate is set to 9600, the data bits is set to 8, the stop bits is set to 2, and both the parity and flow control is set to none. Then click OK and the terminal program will connect to the virtual COM port. The next step is to load and run our program on the MCU. To do this, select Run and Debug. After our program is loaded, we can run our program by pressing the Power On Reset button on the development board or running it via Code Composer Studio by pressing the green Run button. When the program runs, we can see the ADC conversion values displayed in our terminal window. We can also use the flashlight included with the kit to change the stimulation of the ambient light sensor and see that the conversion values in the terminal change. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on TI.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can download software like Halcogen, NowFlash, and the High End Timer Integrated Development Environment. You can also order development kits through the TI eStore from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer Support Forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs, in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted to this forum. The final web-based resource is the Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about Hercules MCUs. The wikis contain useful information like development kit, board schematics, and training content. I hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.